What a day. Pack a job, innit, really? Uh, I'm Linda from Hong Kong. Oh, we're recording. Day two, no ticket. I'm sure it's lunchtime. You live in that city, huh? They're not the friendliest bunch. All good in the hood? Oh, mate, I think you're cracking under the pressure, mate. I'm really tired. <laughs> oh, what a day. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning back in. Now, we are back in uh, Chelsea this morning and we are changing a fuse board over which you saw in content, which was a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, I'll leave a link for it on the screen, actually. It'll be up here. And uh, yeah, we're changing the fuse board over and I've just parked up. James has just parked up. He's parked up literally right outside the building, so we know he's going to get a ticket, but so be it. Um, otherwise, everything is good. One thing I will say about these buildings, um, in fact, let me, let me walk around the front and I'll see if I can sort of subtly show it without the concierge seeing. I've had to take a fair distance, <laughs> fair distance from the building, but this is it. So this is, uh, that's actually Hyde Park just over there. But these sort of buildings, all these ones, and they're beautiful. They're, don't get me wrong, they're lovely buildings. They're really nice. They're very well kept, very well maintained, yada, yada, yada. But the, the porters and concierges in these places are not the, they're not the friendliest bunch. And this one is no exception. When you try and work in these sort of blocks, these buildings and stuff, it's a real battle trying to do with concierges and porters and stuff because they don't want to let you in. You can't go through the main entrance. You've got to go through the tradesman's entrance, which is invariably always around the side or the back. And here it is. You've got to go down into the basement to then go up the fire escape at the back. And it's just a real issue. And they just, they don't want to help you at all. Like I've just asked to turn the power off and we've just been told, well, well, it's not very convenient for us right now. I'm like, well, you just sat there looking at your monitor. <laughs> I think I've worked out. You've got to kill them with kindness. Lots of smiles, be really nice. Even if they're a total dick to you, just be just loads and loads of smiles, be really nice. And that tends to the camera guys even got one eye out for. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah. So yeah, when you're dealing with porters and concierge, just loads of smiles, be nice and friendly, and just that tends to work best, I find. Oh mate, I think you're cracking under the pressure, mate. This has been painted over about 5,000 times, so there could be a whole nest of like African killer bees in there. Oh, I don't like that. Well, you've got to go in there, mate. It's, you know, I've got to go to the van and get materials. So the first thing you've got to do is remove that Lucasade thing. Oh, look at that, mate. Look at those big, big webs. I don't know if I can do it, huh? Nah, mate, you've, you've got to. You've just got to, you've just got to. a full on mess. Yeah, so, okay, so get your hand in there. I and think that. I'd rather work like a risk death by electric shock. <laughs> I, I can't. Uh, mate, you, you just, mate, you've just got to do it. You've been on holiday for a week, you're charged up, you're raring to go, so just get in there. I don't want the legs off of wood. <laughs> right, so while James is doing the fuse board just behind us, I'm going to start doing these down lights. These ones are the old um, MR16s, and we're using these, um, you know, these large ones. I love these ones. We use these everywhere, the bit ones with a big 100 mil disc, but they're great for covering up because the, the old downlights which came out with this diameter and they're quite, they're about 85 mil. So they're quite hard to try and find replacement downlights with an 85 mil diameter is quite difficult, especially if you want a specific, you know, if you want a really fit, thin bezel like this. So these ones are great because they just cover all the damage. They're just, they're not, they're not expensive. They're like, Like, how is he allowed to do that? Honestly, if we did that, Porter would be up here literally shouting at us. So yeah, those are about a tenner each, somewhere 10, 12 quid, but they're super good. And you can, what I like about them is you can put whatever lamp you want in them. So if you want warm white, cool white, whatever, or a Philips Hue, you can just put those, you can bop those straight in. So we've got this kitchen to do first, and then I've got the, I've got some LED strip in the hallway I've got to sort out. So I'll do these first. I don't know how much plaster when they plastered this. There's like two inches of plaster here above this ceiling. It's literally like that thick of plaster. Can you imagine the weight of this whole ceiling? Like how much weight that must be? It's like, that must be like 30 bags of plaster on, on this ceiling. The weight must be astonishing. I don't even know why they've done it. It must be just a really poor, I don't know. In the hallway, just in here, we're replacing these. Now, if you haven't seen these before, these are, or they were called architectural lamps. And they're quite neat, it's, a, it's quite a neat concept. The idea is that's the fitting that it plugs into and it holds the lamp like so. And the idea is you would have that fitting just like mounted on the wall there. You just have that piece up here, one piece down there and you just click into it. The main issue that these have is that these are a C2 when you're doing EICR now, because what happens is, and you can't even really get these anymore. You can, if you look around, I think Crompton, yeah, Crompton lamps. They still make them, but they're quite, you can't just walk into a wholesaler and buy them. You've got to get them online. And normally it's an ordering job at any wholesaler you go to. It's unusual you can get them. But the reason it's C2 is because with these, 
when the lamp's in, it is okay. And they look, they do, to be fair, look very nice. But when you take the lamp out, you've then got a bare exposed live part, which obviously is a C2, or actually a C1 to be fair. So it's just an exposed live part that's left. So for that reason, it's no longer suitable for use. So yeah, when you see them, we're just changing them here and we're putting LED strip in instead. But worth noting if you come across those, you see them in bathrooms actually, next to mirrors, they have the mirror and they normally have these either side of the bathroom mirror. That's normally where you see them the most. But yeah, architectural lights, they're called. I take a lot of time with this content, but the cameraman seems to be really struggling in this position. He's in a stress position on the ladder. These are the architectural lamps I'm on about. So you see, you uh, have yeah, got to be careful because I've done it before taking these out and you actually break the lamp taking it out and then you're just left with those. But it's, uh, yeah, not very good. So these are coming out and we're going to be putting an LED strip all the way around here to replace these. Because as you can see, these are shot, they're all black. All right, we've got a new IP rated light going in the bathroom here because it's had that old flush mounted circular fitting with an ES bulb in it. There are one or two people asking, I think like last year, in fact, beginning of lockdown last year, you know that bar job we were doing in the city? A couple of you were asking what's happened to that. Um, that ended, that ended ages ago. It's probably my fault because I didn't update you. That ended ages ago. Um, we didn't actually finish it. Another company went in and finished it. Lockdown came in. We just finished the tray and doing all the tray and trunking work. We just finished it and then lockdown hit and then we had to pack our tools up and leave because it was cater it was catering retail, it was catering industry. So obviously that just fell flat on its ass for nine months. And then about four months ago, the guy who was in charge of that place, the owner, asked if we could come back. Um, and he just said, look, can you do it a bit cheaper? I said, look, our rates are eight. I can't change it. You know, just, you know, I've got, you know, your expenses are X and Y and I've got to be able to make Z. So our expenses are what they are. And that was basically the last I heard of it. And I drove past about a month ago and it was all finished. But again, this is my argument. It's down to cost and price, you know, um, little things like the fire alarm panel in there. That building, you remember seeing it from the outside with a big building and there's a main fire alarm panel doing all of the upstairs communal services and stuff. And that little shop had its own fire alarm panel. Now you've got to link that panel to the big daddy panel for the rest of the block. You've got to link them. So if there's a fire in that little part of the building, it alerts everybody else in the building. Now I know for a fact they haven't done that step because I know that because when I look through the window, I look at the fire alarm panel that was there and I know that panel cannot do that sort of communication. So they've cut corners to get the job done. And it has got a little fire alarm system, but it's not interlinked to the rest of the building. And all right, it's got a concrete ceiling and stuff, but how do you think Grenfell started? You know, that had a concrete walls, floors and ceilings, but the fire still spread and it killed loads of people. Just because it's a concrete building, it doesn't mean that that's a good enough barrier. Fire can still spread in many other ways. It doesn't just have to go upwards. It can go out and up and back in. There's lots of, you know, but yeah, I know numerous corners were, numerous corners were cut there. In fact, I know all the T&E, all the T&E, it was all grey twin and earth they ran in. And I'm like, but again, it's price, you can't, you know, your price is your price. Anyway, I'm waffling, but you get the gist. Somebody else finished it. All right, okay. I guess we're filming then. End of the day. You get good, you get good moments. No parking ticket. I only paid for four hours as well. I was adamant we get a ticket. Absolutely adamant we didn't get one. I think the wardens come round. I think they just come round once, like in the morning or something, and they issue their tickets and they move on to another borough or another area. But we haven't got one. So James got one, but he parked in a permit bay, so we kind of expected it. But it wasn't even that expensive. Um, Hammersmith and Fulham is still the worst, but Chelsea isn't too bad. It was 65 quid, which is it's practically cheap. Anyway. We're off back to the unit now, so we'll catch up. We'll pick this video up tomorrow morning when we're back here. Day two. Good morning, gang. It's Tuesday. I've lost all track of, I just need a break. I've been working at like 100% capacity for like just months mentally. It's not even physically, that's the thing. Like you're just working mentally, just like from the second you wake up in the morning, it's just do, 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 do. And it just, you know, from literally from the minute you go to bed, you know, it's just, a hundred percent it just doesn't ease up and i am i'm really starting to feel the strain of that now i'll be honest so yeah <laughs> I, drove, <laughs> I drove out of here to go to that job you saw yesterday and the camera guy's like 
have you got any materials? <laughs> I turn around to come back. I drew it off, left all my materials here. You're just tired, not thinking. Those were the downlights I was on about, the Integral Evo Fires. They've got a 100 mil disc. So if you're trying to cover shit up, those are the ones you want. Uh, I think tool stations sell them about 10 or each, but they don't normally have them on the shelf. You've got to order them in. Right, we'll see you over there. Right, we're back in this place, changing this, this fuse board over. Had to use these um, power banks to keep the fridge, because it's a built-in fridge freezer here with a fuse spur. So what I ended up having to do was disconnect the fuse, take it, take the wire for the fridge out the back of the fuse spur, put it on a plug top temporarily. Um, well, I plugged it into this power bank overnight just to keep the fridge running. So it's not running continuously, it's just the pump, the compressor runs just to keep the fridge cool. And then once it's cool, it just shuts off. So it's not running for like nine, 10 hours overnight. But either way, we'd already used this yesterday and it's flat now this morning. So I've just <laughs> plugged in the, yes, I'm really tired. <laughs> Basically that one's flat. I plug that one in. We're gonna get going on the fuse board. We're gonna carry on. Everything's gravy. It's all lovely. Happy days, lovely jubbly. Yeah, these came from a company called Power Oak. They sent me three of them. They sent the little one. I think you've seen the little one in some previous content. And they sent me the medium sized one and then this big Bertha here. But they are good for this sort of stuff where you've got to run a fridge or something and you've got no power, especially if you're doing a larger board change like this in a domestic environment. And it's just a pair of plugs on the back. It's just a big lithium ion battery. That's basically all it is. But they are good for this sort of stuff. These are well worth it, uh, especially now where everyone's working from home and you've got to keep stuff on. But like this one, I think you can power one kilowatt. This one can do one and a half kilowatts, I think. You can plug a toaster in, Wi-Fi TV. They are really, really good. So uh, yeah, big thank you to Power Oak actually because they're, uh, they're a godsend. They really are. I'll leave a link down below. You can check them out on Amazon. There's one light above your head we just fitted. And we've got another one here. These were actually a limitation on the test report because I couldn't take these out of the ceiling because they've just been painted in. I'm sure at some point when these were fitted, they weren't painted in, but over the years, this had like 20 coats of paint and every swinging dick's just been in it. Like, mm, I'm just painting over it. Why would you do that? You've got to try and break it as gently as you can. I mean, this again, this is why I like these fittings because it covers a bigger area. So when you do damage the old ones, pulling them out, which invariably I'm probably going to here, you just have to try and very gently scour around the light fitting. Why would you willingly paint over a light fitting? Some are, to be fair, some light fittings are designed to be painted over. These were never made with that intention. Yeah, the standard, the original electrics here actually is above average, it's pretty good. And you can normally tell the standard. If you look, I think the fastest way to, to understand the, the standard of electrics in a house, just pull the down light out. And this has been done quite neatly. They've used a junction box, nice and neat. So the amount of times I see cables just going into the, they just go into the back of a connector like that and they just leave it bare above the ceiling. But it's quite neat. Whoever did the original work actually did a very neat job here. So that's normally the fastest way I find. Just pull it down like that and have a look. Right, do you remember in the last, it was a couple of videos ago, I was talking about this fan in this bathroom and I was saying how even though it's technically outside 2.25 that that doesn't necessarily mean that it's still suitable for the environment because you have to take into consideration external factors, you have to take into account the environment. And I was saying that it is possible that if Betty Crocker is here washing her hair or something and she does this, which they do do, it will spray up onto that fan, which is not impossible. There is a like, though it is possible that it could happen. There were a couple of you saying, uh, not many to be fair, but there were a few saying, well, no, nah, sorry, if it's in the, you know, if you're, if it's in the instructions that you can fit it in zone one, then it's absolutely fine. That is correct, yeah. If the manual that you're reading says that it's suitable for zones one and two, which this one does actually, let me find it. So this one here, this fan is suitable for installations within zone one and two. So that's absolutely fine. It's actually just outside zone one anyway, but it could be right down there. It would be absolutely fine. But as long as it says it, the point I was driving at was that you can get 12 volt versions of a lot of fans. And generally as a rule of thumb, not always, but generally as a good rule of thumb, if that particular fan, they don't stock that fan in a 12 volt version, they just, this one has just a mains voltage only option. But if they do a mains voltage one and a 12 volt option, almost always the user, the handbook, the guide that comes with the fan for the mains voltage one will say it can't go in zone one. The reason they say that is because they have a 12 volt fan. That fan will be designed for installation in zone one. So that was more what I was driving at, just because 
Just because something is outside the zone doesn't mean it's still okay. You still have to take into, into effect, you still have to take into account external factors. External influences, I think, is actually a technical term. Uh, but yeah, that's actually fine for zone one. So yeah, just thought I'd make reference to that because a few of you were questioning it last time. Yeah, just to reiterate what I'm on about, to give you an example, 2.25 finishes about here, somewhere on this line here. Now, yes, that fans outside the zone, but by rights, what that means is if I wanted to, I could put a pendant right there. And there's nothing anyone could say about it, technically. If I wanted to put, I could just literally just put a normal bear pendant right there. There's no reason why not. It's outside the zone. But just because something's, just because it's outside the zone, that doesn't mean that it's okay to have it there. You know, that would, I mean, that would be a dumb thing to do. But if you're following the zones in a bathroom, technically you could. But that's the point. Just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should. You've got to take into a consideration because a pendant is completely unsuitable for that environment. It's steamy, moisture ingress. You know, it, it's just not suited to that environment. So. This whole thing of zones, I get it, and the zones are there, but I like to think zones are there as a guide. You, you've got to, you've got to go beyond. You've got, you've got to sort of go beyond that, if that makes any sense. But that's just an example, for instance. Yeah, that's actually the other thing. Like you can keep going with this mentality, like how, where do you stop and start? So like you can't have double sockets in bathrooms, single sockets, only power outlets. You're just basically not allowed them. But then like you go into some properties to do an ICR, and you'll see there's a tumble dryer in the corner of the bathroom. Now is that acceptable? And the way I've always looked at it, they say three meters, I'm pretty sure it's three meters from the edge of zone one, that you can't have a socket. And I just, I'll check the reg, I'll put it on the screen now. I'm pretty sure it's three meters, but I'll be corrected if I see, if it's something different on the screen, I'll, be, I'll correct myself. Um, I've always known it to be three meters from the edge of zone one. But what if you've got something like a tumble dryer? Uh, and let's say this was a bathtub here, and you've got a tumble dryer. Now the tumble dryer might not be, I've seen it before where the tumble dryer is actually, there's a plug just on the outside of the bathroom, but it was more convenient to put the tumble dryer in the bathroom. So technically the plug is outside the bathroom, but the tumble dryer is on the inside of the bathroom. I've always been of the opinion that if you're in the bath, let's say you're in the tub, you're soaking in the tub, if I can reach over and touch it, then that's unacceptable. That's the way I, that's sort of the mentality I've had. If you can touch it, even though the plug isn't in the bathroom, if you can touch that appliance, then that's, in my case, that would be unacceptable. But that's, that's how I see it. It's not just about where the plug is, it's about what you could technically plug into it. And it's some, some of those things are quite a gray area when you start having washing machines and tumble dryers. Like sometimes people will box them in. And if it's boxed in and you can't access it, like boilers in bathrooms, that's another one. Um, I, we did in the ICR the other day. Tub was here and the boiler, was literally right there. You could literally step, you, I mean, you could just lie in the bath and just touch the metal case of the boiler. Now, is that acceptable? I don't think so. So it was in a cupboard, but you could open the cupboard door and touch it while you're standing in a wet bath. So the way I did it, if you can close the cupboard, so you've got no access to the metal work and put a lock on it, as long as there's some, as long as you can't unlock it, as long as you can't open it from when you're in the tub. I mean, you could say, oh, you could take the key, but I mean, how far do you go with this mentality? As long as you can't touch it from the tub, that to me is what matters. <laughs> it's always good when you turn it on, it doesn't trip. Right, that is the end result of these panels in the ceiling. So this is the LED strip that runs all the way around in all three. So it's a, it's a vast improvement than what was here. It was the old architectural fittings. Uh, All right, um, all right, so. I, I don't know what's happened, but we're gonna fix it and it'll be great. <laughs> it's just that it's the, it's the clip, that's all. It's that, you know, what clamps onto the cable. What a day. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> uh, we love Harvey. Yeah, that's it. That's the fuse board there. Yeah. Yeah, I did all that. It's puck a job, isn't it? Really. We actually use that fire foam. It just look garbage. But what do you do? Look, we gotta get going. If we don't, if we're not out of here, Mr. SAS downstairs, he's gonna kick our ass if we're not out of here by half four. Oh, oh what a day! Ah, oh. uh, turn the lights off first. I made that mistake last time. Oh, up. Oh. It'll be fun, they said. You'll climb out the windows a lot. Alright.
Do we actually have a ticket? Oh, landed. Day two, no ticket. Fabulous. You ever do that? Wear your blue shoes out, you forget you're wearing them? I do it all the time. I got onto the tube once. It was months ago. I got onto the tube, just didn't realise I was wearing them until someone pointed it out. Mildly embarrassing. I've just realised the um, that middle bay, the one which went out, uh, it's a 60 watt driver pack and it's uh, I, it was the only one I had yesterday and I put it in just to test the lights. But that's all it is, it's overloading that pack and the pack switching off as a safety feature. I've got, I've got a 120 watt pack, I've just got to go back and fit it tomorrow but that will probably be why that, that bay turned off. I've just got to put a bigger driver pack in and it'll be alright. Just thought I'd report back at you because it's just occurred to me it's the driver pack is too small. The other two bays have got 120 watt drivers. It's about a 70 watt load on those lights. Each bay is about 70 watts. So I put a 120 watt driver in, but that one's only a 60 watt one, which is, I think, why it turns off. Day three. I'm not sure where this is going to go in the content, but I just want to drop it in anyway. We've just finished changing this street light and I've had a message from Lynn, apparently. Uh, I'll leave it all up on the screen here. She says, uh, I'm Linda from Hong Kong. Are you David? And I just put back, wrong person, I'm afraid, because you just know it's a scam. And she's put, sorry, let me confirm the number. I think you must be very polite and gentleman. Maybe we can be friends. <laughs> got a feeling that this, this picture, and she's very pretty, by the way. I, I've got a feeling that's not her. I've got a feeling that this is a fat, sweaty man in a basement in Birmingham. So let's put, um, yeah, sure. Love to be friends. You look lovely. The heart, the heart emoji. Yeah, scent. Okay, done. I'll keep you posted. Right, so this girl, well, this guy, I think we're gonna give this girl a name. Let's call her Frank. So Frank has replied, because uh, I put, yeah, sure, love to be friends. You look lovely. So Frank has replied, thanks. Lived in London for three years. I returned to Hong Kong because of epidemic, but I plan to go back to London recently. You live in that city, huh? So I'll put, uh, no, what, yeah, what can I put that'll entice her slash him? <laughs> Blowy. <laughs> oh, wow. You're planning on coming back. That's fantastic. Would love to meet you. Let's just cut straight to, no, no, let's no, no, cut to the chase. Oh, fuck, no, I can't put that. <laughs> delete that. We'd love to meet you. Let's just put, yeah. Okay, right. She, so Frank must think I'm totally on board. Let's string him along, see what he says. Oh, we're recording. Everybody, welcome. Hi. Next. Right, it's the next day. I've taken the truck to work today because there's literally, there was just so much, there's so much rubbish in the back of that truck from yesterday. I underestimated how big those light fittings were, those street, those, those actual street lights. I, I don't understand how people can say they can change like 40 of those in a day because when I was doing my highways course, like some of the other fellas were turning up and they were like, oh yeah, we'll do about 40 of those a day roughly if you get a move on. How? I, do you know? I, I can't see how, I just don't. There's no way if you do 40 a day, even if there was like three of you in the truck, there's just, you couldn't do it. There's just, there's no way. Even if you didn't set out any signs or cones or anything, you can't, I don't know. Maybe, I think one an hour is realistically, I think that's realistic to do one. If you were really getting, you had to get a good push on, I think you could probably do one an hour if they were smooth with no issues, but I don't see how you could do it faster than that. I really don't. But anyway, yeah, I'm doing fault finding on some outside lights at the moment. I've got a PIR, I think it's a PIR that's faulty here. Um, I think there's some issues with the outside lights at the back, so maybe if I've got time, I can show you those. Um, but yeah, it's all good so far, all good in the hood. Yeah, this is one of my sort of bed bugs with integrated downlights. I fitted these for, I had to check the invoice, four years, seven months ago, and I now started flickering, but these are fully integrated lights. You can only, you have to replace the whole fitting. Now at the time I fitted them, I thought happy days, you know, makes perfect sense, they're really great. But of course now you've got to change the whole fitting out because you can't just change the lamp in them. I mean, they've done four and a half years. I'm waiting for one of them to flicker, but they're not they'll start flickering. One, they'll just individually start going off in a second. It's bloody annoying though, because it's not just, you don't just replace the lamp, you've got to replace the whole fitting. So it's just an awkward conversation you just don't want to have with a customer, you know? I'm sure there are some brands you can buy which are really good, they'll last you like 10 years, but these have done four years, seven months they've done before they started failing. Not a bad service life, I guess. They're, they're warranted for three years or 25,000 hours. So 
yeah, they've met it, I guess. This is the downside with integrated. I just, I don't fit them anymore because of this. It's just, you know, customers can't change them. You've got to change them. Yeah, that's the problem with these integrated downlights because like they've reached their lifespan technically. They, you know, that the, there was a warranty of three years. Well, they've done 4.7. So they have, they've gone over their warranty. Plus when you work it out, they had 25,000 hours. Well, if, if you said they do about 12 hours a day, which is what the customer said, I think if you worked it out, that was what? about five no it's 5.7 years oh, 5.7 years so all right they've done 4.7 but that's assuming 12 hours a day could be more could be less there's lots of variables but do you know what i mean they've actually reached their life they've actually done the lifespan they were supposed to do so it's just a difficult one you've now got to go to the customer and say look those 29 down lights now need to be changed uh, i just hate doing it because you just feel like a dick just pushing more money out of them so the next ones I fit in there are just going to be GU10s. They can just swap the lamps out when they chain, when they when they start to die, job done. But it's just an awkward conversation. You just don't want to have with with the customer, you know. But yeah, that's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's lunchtime. It is. I'm sure it's lunchtime. Yeah, it's one o'clock. It's lunchtime. I'm allowed a lunch break. I'm getting a bit better at this. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm filling out EICRs, changing them from, from failed to pass. It's an immensely boring job. Everybody, right, it's Friday. It's time to love you and leave you. Everyone's gone home again, so I've got some stock I've got to book in. I've got other bits. I've got stuff I've got to send back to Amazon. Loads for me to get on with, so I'm going to love you and leave you. This Friday is going to be a tool bag review video, which is coming up. That's going to be Friday. That's a really good video. We've done some nice new camera angles and stuff. Really looking forward to it. The following Monday, so next Monday, we, we've actually done our first street light installation. So that is going to be coming up next Monday. Again, comments, questions, anything, chuck it all down below. We really appreciate it. And otherwise, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of days time. This is my virginal lift. This is, <laughs> I literally feel like a virgin for the, doing it for the first time. I've got a sneaking suspicion we've got to move the truck. Oh, fucking gonna have to, aren't I? First schoolboy error. Nervous, isn't it? You just know, it's just nerves, you know? My boss is back there having a good fucking laugh. Oh, he's got to move his truck now. But I literally don't care. I'm like a dog with two dicks, the fact we've managed to come this far.